Gideon Haig from the Australian over here. And it's Peter Lawler from the Australian over here. Geez, you didn't really come through the curtains like Tony Barber on that one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you started with a sigh. Well, I haven't got much left after that emotionally depleting day. Oh, I don't know how many more of these emotionally depleting days I can do. I was just thinking back, you know, Headingley took it out. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I needed to go to a health mm. farm after that. <laughs> and, but, um, and then Sydney, I mean, Sydney was a big day. Oh, but this one, wow, that was an incredible day's cricket. That's why they call it a test, Peter. That's why they call it a test. Oh, thanks for that, Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> what of us had to say it? Uh, I must admit, I didn't, I mean, it, it was a nagging thought at the back of my hand that, you know, they've shown they could do it, but I really didn't mm. think that they would. No, and I, you know, I'm I'm so glad that they have because you know we've it's been one of those sort of slow dawning test series, hasn't it? Where just every day you're sort of conscious, more and more conscious that you're getting something special, and for it to finish on that note is just perfect. I mean, wouldn't it have been a shame if it had been a sort of a stalemate? It wouldn't have been in keeping with the rest of the series, but for all four results to be, um, you know possible down to the very last moment was exactly what the series deserved as a, as a conclusion so the kind of the the narrative line of it um ended um uh, w- without any sense of anticlimax uh this was this was one for the true believers and um you know once again we i'm sure there'll be lots of encomia for for test cricket over the next few days but this really was a stunning vindication of the of the format Forget about four-day test matches. Jeez. <laughs> so you had all... What, sorry, what's the fourth result? A tie? Well, it could have been a draw, couldn't it? Yeah, Australia yeah. could have won. India could have won. It could have been a tie. Could have been a draw. Yeah, okay. You factored in the tie? Yeah, I did factor in the tie, yeah. Mm. Um, you know, the, Australia looked as though they had it won going into the last over of the tied test match. And, uh, you know, with that Indian tail, you know, anything's possible. I thought, you know, Rishab Pant's play towards the end was absolutely nerveless. You know, the the closer he got to the to the result, the more cavalier he became. Some of those slogs out of the rough, and some of those, um, you know, big sweeps from outside off stump, the ramp, the fall over pull. It was just all going on. It was like a man who believed that nothing could stop him. And maybe that's a motif for the entire team. You know, they really did um, just seem not never to consider the possibility of doing anything other than going for a victory and it's interesting wasn't it because i heard him interviewed after the match and he said uh that that the coaches always tell him you're our match winner don't worry about anything Mm. else you're special you do what you do that rishab pant thing well he might not be the best keeper that they've got um it was really was a and i've said it tomorrow uh tomorrow i don't have a lot of good ideas left but uh there's a sense of tortoise in the hair uh, mm-hmm. in the way they went about it, wasn't there? Well, they did, for sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, obviously the plan was to bat um, for as long as, for, just to get through the first two sessions, sustaining minimal casualties and relying on wickets in hand in the third session to uh, to get you over the line. And they had the the perfect um, specimen for uh, for fulfilling that mission, didn't they? Pajara, slowest, slowest half century of his career, but... <laughs> You know, which is did, saying something, <laughs> but it didn't feel slow. You know, it, it didn't certainly didn't feel uneventful. Um, no. It felt as though you know every ball was a was a threat, and every ball survived was a kind of a victory. So he bought time, and he he sucked he sucked up pressure. He um he drew the sting from that Australian attack, which we as we both know has been sort of pretty severely overworked in the in the last two Test matches. And you know, by the time uh pant got going after t you know that the situation was perfectly set up for him um and pant got man of the match didn't he he did he did and you know i was i was reflecting before that um you know had had india not been bowled out for 36 in adelaide had they maybe been bowled out for 150 and had maybe rhythm and saha you know got 20 in the second innings a battling 20 pant might still be an onlooker um, but it was the disaster of Adelaide that got the got the coach and the selectors and the captain thinking, God, you know, we've got to find some more run making options. We'll go with our with the better batsman rather than the better keeper. So 
a perverse kind of outcome. And, of course, the other guy who didn't play in Adelaide, Shubman Gill, was the other outstanding batsman for uh, for India. That will be a, for, a, a mystery forever why he wasn't picked in Adelaide ahead of Prithvi Shaw. Uh, what an extraordinary young cricketer he is, and that's the highest test, that's the highest score of his very brief test career so far, and 91, wasn't it? Look, yeah, look to get that 100. I think he would have only been about the – sorry about that – the fourth person um, to get a hundred on the last day of a Brisbane. Yeah, interesting. Test. And Thank in you. fact, I reckon he would have only been the fourth person to get a hundred in this series. Good stat. Good, Good stat. stat. I got stats. Yeah. You got stats. I've got stats. <laughs> roll yeah. up, roll up. We got stats. So what did India? India scored. Th- I'm just having a look now. You kind of <laughs> you're so busy writing about it, you don't see the scores. You know, they <laughs> what what did they scored? Three hundred and twenty nine. The yeah. fourth innings, the previous highest score to win a match at the Gabba was 236. In 1951 too. Amazing. Mm. And when was the last time Australia lost at the Gabba, Gideon? Bicentennial year, mate, 1988. Mm. You'd take a pretty serious team to beat Australia at the Gabba, a, re- a full-strength Australia. Well, isn't it funny? You know, in advance of this test match, we were talking about, oh, India doesn't want to go to the Gabba, you know, Australian Citadel, they're afraid. Oh, they come to the Gabba, they don't like making their own beds. Oh, look at them, you know, they're just... Uh, every time that Australia, that India's been kind of belittled or, or ridiculed or sort of, um, uh, you know, disregarded, they just proved us wrong. And it's been magnificent. Uh I mean, it's a team that's been battling against its own limitations and a terrible, terrible run with injury in the absence of its own captain, but also against a bit of an undercurrent of Australian derision. We kind of expected India to break at some point, but they just kept bending and then bouncing back. Yep. Yep. Again and again. And I guess Mm. (laughs) finally it's real. They've got the Border Gavaska Trophy. They've won two Border Gavaska Trophies in a row at home. It's a great achievement. Well, yeah, and three in a row if you include 2017 in India. They have a long-term ascendancy over us. Next time we go to India, well, I mean, who's going to be there for a start? We don't know, but it is going to be an absolutely... um, an amazing series, an amazing series. Yeah. I will desperately want to be there for it. I will not want to be sitting in my study watching it on a laptop. <laughs> oh, God, no. I can't do that again. I cannot do that again. Well, it was great to hear Sonny Gavaska commentate mm. uh, and mm. be there for it. You know? So it's like having the trophy calling, calling the result to us. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Magic, magic moment. Well, for Sonny, on one, Sonny on one station and uh, and AB on the other. Looking, looking, I think, more like Tom Bosley every day, Alan Border. I don't know whether anyone's he's noted really, that. He's getting more avuncular, is he? Yeah, very avuncular. Um, he doesn't look like Captain Grumpy. He's Uncle Mild these days. He's such and a lovely, so, lovely man. He is a lovely man, man isn't he? Yeah. Or is that what that was Eddie McGuire, I think, said that, you know, once when he saw Ron Brassie get on a plane and walk down the back to economy and, you know, Eddie said, you shouldn't be in economy, you're Ron Brassie. He said, I think he said, that the only person in the world who doesn't know who Ron Brassie is, is Ron Brassie. <laughs> and, uh, in a way, that's the same thing about Alan Border, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's an unassuming, friendly, knockabout guy. You kind of have to remind, hey, mate, you're Alan Border. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, you are a really serious piece of human being. But look, speaking of unassuming figures, how about Ajinkya Rahane? I mean, yeah. did, didn't you love just watching him in the Indian dugout this evening? Just completely inscrutable. Didn't move, didn't gesture, hardly talked, just looked completely composed. I mean, you don't often see a captain in the midst of his players, but you did get a very strong impression, didn't you, of a man who is just, who treats the two imposters just the same. You know, he didn't get excited. Imagine if Coley had been in that dugout towards the end of the day. It would have been, you know, it would have been like, you know, a a pop concert. It would have, um, the the camera wouldn't have been able to look away. There would have been Coley cam. But, you know, the... uh, the, the camera could look away because every time he went back to Rahane, he looked the same. Uh, and it was it was just fantastic. I mean, there could not be a more deserving captain, Victor, than uh, than Rahane, to take the captaincy under such inauspicious circumstances, to lead by example in Melbourne, to uh, to pull that 
very smart change in the batting order in Sydney, which um, which made possible pants resistance, which uh, which slowed down the Australians on the last day, and that's ended up playing in India's favour, hasn't it? The fact that India were able to hold out on that last day and leave the Australians leaden going into into Brisbane. Uh, I thought it really showed today the long-term effects of attrition in this series. Uh, and it's all been masterminded by Rahane. Oh, Ravi Shastri as well. But but I think, you know, Rahane is he's the guy. He just goes out there and he puts himself on the line. He did it again today, going out there and playing that little cameo just before tea and making it clear that he was going to take risks in order to win that game. Set a fantastic example for his players. He sure did. I remember reading an article, an old article about him at the start of the series where even well into his test career, he still lived at home in a small flat with his father. Yeah. He had a curfew when he went out. And when he played cricket away from home, he had to call home every day because his father said it was a very dangerous period for young men. They could get ahead of themselves and he didn't want him to get ahead of himself. So uh, he had to lead a, a humble life. I, I think he's left that behind now. But uh, such, there you go, Gideon. Maybe you could try that with your daughter. Uh, that sort of, I've how, tried how numerous that? approaches. Have you? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll get the we'll get we'll get somewhere eventually. Uh, anyway, look, great stuff from Rahane, great stuff from Pajara. You know, a win really for the good guys today. I thought it has been a um, an inspirational Indian team this summer. We'll 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 do a, a sort of a full scale series review tomorrow, and uh, go through our overstuffed mailbag and catch up with people who've sent in questions. Thank you all for for those questions. But um, but just for the moment, you know, savour um, fantastic day of Test cricket um, at the end of a wonderful series with fantastic individual performances. Uh, no one disgraced. Um, everyone enthused. A Test series that we didn't, in some respects, it's been a bit of a surprise that it's you know gone as smoothly as it as it has, and um, it's laid down a bit of a marker for for Test cricket. Um, you know, Test cricket survived survived a lot of things. Hasn't been expected to survive a pandemic, but it, but it really, really has.